Well, hello everyone. This is Michelle Moross and you have reached Mental Shift. Thank you so much for joining us. And oh, by the way, if you have no idea who I am and you happen to stumble across Mental Shift, you're like, who is this lady? My name is Michelle Moross. I'm an international speaker. I'm a speaker coach and, oh my goodness, I forgot what I do. Oh, I coach other people uh, on uh, communication. So basically, I do a little bit of a lot of things, and I have a couple of books, and I have this podcast. So welcome, and thank you for joining me. Now, today, I have a really awesome lady with me, and I met her a couple of years ago through another organization that I was volunteering with, and I met her because they asked me to edit a book and uh, be one of her editors, and I'm like, you need another editor? And they're like, yeah, we need someone else to look out for this book, and that's how I met Amy. So please meet Amy. Amy Collette. She is a book coach and she has publishing services. Fabulous woman. I was so glad I got connected with her uh, because I, I, I need to talk to her about my next couple of books. But anyways, that's a whole nother story. Uh, she has uh, a website that you need to go to. It's www.unleashyourinnerauthor.com. And here's the secret. Everyone's got an inner author. You just don't realize it. All those stories you keep telling people and people say, yeah, yeah, you told me that story before. That's one of your books. That's what's coming out of you. And so what Amy does is she helps people coach that out of you so that you can get that message to the world and that you can share that story, even if you write it just to give it to your grandchildren. So I'm so pleased to have Amy with us because she's awesome. And now you'll get to figure out how awesome she is. Please welcome Amy Collette. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. It's great to be with you. I'm so glad you finally made it on. What we, we kept having to cancel for all the different things happening and then the whole COVID thing happened. So it's like, oh, now we're stuck. Now I can get you on Zoom instead. <laughs> <laughs> right. It all works out perfectly timing. It does. So Amy, the Unleash, um, Unleash Your Inner Author. I mean, you've been working in the, the publishing world for quite a bit. And you are very, very good and amazingly patient from what I've learned from you. <laughs> we won't get into all that, but you're a very patient human. And that, that's what new authors need, especially. And then those of us who have had written a few books, we need the, uh, the dedication that you have. So what brought you into the world of publishing? What's your backstory? Well, you know, like, like most of us, I have kind of a windy, twisty path to where I am now. Um, but I was a writer, professional writer and editor for many years. Uh, I was mostly in the technical and scientific and medical worlds. And so I got, you know, I got great experience doing that. Um, but then I wrote my own book and learned a lot more about the, the actual publishing and self-publishing world and learned some hard lessons, did it wrong the first time, put together my own team and, and did it right the second time. And so I never want other authors to go through that sort of pain, painful process of making all the mistakes first <laughs> and then doing it right. I wanna help smooth out that road for them. So once I started editing um, books that I call transformational nonfiction, so they're basically our stories but with the teaching, with teaching moments throughout, you know, the goal is really to help raise other people's vibration, you know, help them uh, with self-development, self-growth, um, different things that they might need in their lives. So that's all the books we do are, are transformational nonfiction. And um, that makes me happy every day, getting up and helping to raise the positive vibration of the planet. So that's, that's how I got into what I'm doing now. And um, working with fabulous authors every day, coming out with new books all the time. So that's the, that's the short story, <laughs> Michelle. Yeah, I love it because that's the kind of books I write. And yeah. I, I'm developing a compilation book right now of multiple people who go through my speaker boot camp, and they all want to write something, but they're all terrified to write the full book. So I said, okay, well, we'll all do a chapter. We'll put it all together. Once you see something published in your, with your name on it, you get, a, you get braver and then you, you can do your own book. I said, right. what I'm doing now is I'm looking for a publishing company that would work very well with that kind of idea. And then if you like them, you go publish your own book through them and then they'll help you through it. And I'm like, oh, I like that idea. And I'm like, hmm. Mm. Okay coming on my show. So I've got, <laughs> I've got a dual the purpose here. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, out. I'm scoping you out. 
But I love that transformational nonfiction. I've never heard that term before. But that's exactly what you know, the people I tend to work around do. They're telling their own personal story and what did they learn so that other people don't have to suffer through the, you know, the brick in the head idea. It's like, right. hey, here, let me guide you through that. I've seen that bit. You know? Right. <laughs> don't, signs, don't do that. Um, me, I, I'm going to ask you a really strange question, get off topic a little bit and come right back to it. But under your name, I don't know if the, uh, the viewers can see it. Under your name here, it says the gratitude connection. What is that? Okay, the gratitude connection is my book, and I'll grab it right here. Oh. Ta-da! There's oh. a gratitude connection. Okay. And so, speaking of transformational nonfiction, uh, I felt compelled to write this book because I had discovered what worked for me to help me come out of a dark time, out of a, a constant state of fight or flight. You know that constant, you know heart pounding out of your chest, not sleeping well, kind of sweating all the time, just being in that severe anxiety all the time. And I had read about this uh, really simple practice. Um, and it's in the, it comes from the Jewish tradition. It's called Hakarat Hatov. And I don't know if I'm saying it right. I hope I'm, I'm close. I'm not Jewish. But, right now. <laughs> but uh, it just means giving thanks at least a couple times a day so that it becomes a habit. It becomes like a living prayer. It, be, it, it sets the tone for your day and it, and it sets the tone for your sleep before you go to bed. And so I thought, well, that sounds like a pretty great idea, but what do I have to be grateful for? What am I giving thanks for? Cause everything sucks right now. That's where I was. That's where my mindset was. And so I started and I was like, Whoa, I have a lot to be grateful for. You know, I, it kind of surprised me. <laughs> and so uh, I started doing that. I did that for about a week and things drastically started to shift for me just within a week. Yeah. And I thought, and at the time I was actually starting to do some life coaching. And so I had some other people to try things out with. So I, you know, I had them try it and then we came up with different positivity practices. And that's what this whole book is. It starts and ends with gratitude for me. Gratitude is where it's at because gratitude really is love. You know, I, I say it's a combination of love and appreciation. So it's a very high frequency. It's a very high vibration. So when you get yourself in that, it just kind of lifts you, you know? Yeah, I, I love that because it's one of the things I coach my clients on is you must find something you're grateful for. And yeah. they laugh. Yeah, no, 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 no. it's like the thing is, is the more what you dwell on is what comes more. So if you keep dwelling about what you don't have, you'll just get more not having. And if you are <laughs> grateful right. of whatever you find the smallest thing, I am so grateful I have a soft pillow tonight. You know, anything. Yes. Your, your brain starts seeing more positive, more good, more things to be grateful for. And then the next thing you know, it's almost like a tsunami. It's like, whoa. How was I ever not grateful? And so right. that's why I'm excited Well, that you mentioned your book like that, because in the, the times that we are in right now, a lot of people have forgotten that, be grateful you've got a cover over your head. Be grateful that you can complain. Be grateful you've got anything that you can write on Facebook and say. I'm, I'm thinking back, you know, like I told my husband the other day, if this kind of pandemic happened, say 20 something years ago, we would not have any communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would have maybe phones, of course, but phones are harder to reach long distances, you know, like overseas and things like that. Can you imagine how fast those lines would be filled and they would just say, you know, I'm sorry, the number you're reaching is, you know, unavailable at this time. You know, that kind of thing. Right. We are locked in our homes, but still reach the entire world. Be grateful right. for what you got. I mean, this happened when we were teenagers, Amy. We'd all be sitting in a box because nothing else would be happening. All the phone lines would be down and we'd be mailing letters. Oh, we probably wouldn't be able to mail letters because you have to touch them. I mean, you just think of it. Right. If anything like this was going to happen, now is a good time to have it. So that's why I was excited about you, your book, The Gratitude Connection. I'm glad you mentioned that. And then, of course, the uh, free gift you're, you're offering on Unleash Your Inner Author. Now, unleashyourinnerauthor.com. So get there fast because she has a free gift and it's called the daily positivity. 
And what you just heard about the gratitude connection, it's kind of a, a mini guiding. I mean, she's giving you a little, little something every day. And want to explain a little bit more since I just kind of took it and just kept going? Yeah, no, you're right on. You're right on. Um, but there, a lot of them, a lot of the little daily pra uh, practices come from the gratitude connection. So they're little excerpts and they're just small little, they don't take much time. It's not like you have to set aside 20 minutes um, to do some long meditation or anything. It's just, it's a quick hit, something to, to that pop of positivity is what I call it. It's just a little boost every day. Pop of positivity, pop, pop, pop. Yeah. So like you get, uh, so it's at the uh, unleashyourinnerauthor.com slash positive. That's how you find it. And you can also find it on Facebook, wherever I am on Facebook with Unleash Your Inner Author, Amy Collette. If they go to unleashyourinnerauthor.com, there's a button or something that says daily positivity or free gift. Um, that's a good idea, Michelle. I'll add that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you should <laughs> add that. You, you got to make it simple. <laughs> right. Exactly. No, it's just gratitude is everything. And for anyone who's been following me on my journey, um, every day is gratitude. And a lot of people say, Michelle, you are just too darn happy to be real. I mean, this has got to be an act. It's like, no, what you see is what you get. I'm the same on stage, off stage, you name it, I'm the same. Why? Yeah. Because I see gratitude all around me. And no matter what happens, it's what's pulled me through. And anyone who's seen my journey, I mean, I've gone from brain injury, well, I'm still in the brain injury, breast cancer, still in the cancer, but I mean, still, I've gone through a lot of things, but what's fed my soul is being grateful for so many tiny things. And what I tell, I tell my clients or people who watch me on Facebook or social media, the important thing is finding one glimmer one little glimmer or one little thing that you can you can shift in your mindset and it doesn't have to be huge i say take a teeny tiny baby step and that teeny tiny baby step you take in the day tomorrow when you wake up be gratitude be grateful for waking up but when you wake up <laughs> how will you know that that teeny tiny change worked for you what mm. what shift and that way what happens is your brain realizes oh that kind of worked and then it'll allow you to do the next one. So your next teeny tiny step. And what happens is you take so many teeny tiny steps by the end of you know, a month, you know, actually by the end of the week, you're like, whoa, I went really far. But what people do is when they, when they have any situation they do, I need to change. Okay, I'm gonna quit my job, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get divorced, I'm gonna move to another state. It's like, whoa! The human body doesn't like change, okay? Your mind likes to fight resist change mm -hmm. so when you take one teeny tiny step or in this case one one pop 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 positivity from amy collette's uh, unleash your inner author page that little pop is enough to make another pop it's like popcorn pop pop, 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 pop. yeah and soon everything you've been looking for starts popping into your life because you stop blocking it don't do the gigantic leap because all that does is put you in a fear state. Right. And right. As soon as you fail on one of these big steps, you block and you're like, Oh, I can't, it, it didn't work. I, I go back and you, you go back. That's why so many people fail. But if you take one little pop of positivity a day, they add up. So next right. time you're thinking about jumping and doing, no, forget it. I'm, I'm going to either go big or go home and, and you don't. Think of popcorn kernels, one pop at a time. Right. You don't have to do, you don't have to explode the bag. Right. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Right. It's just yeah. so, it's so funny because growing up, you always think um, life changes have to be big and fast. And the thing is, is, right. you know, people who, who have huge successes, they're 20 years in the making. It, it, it's not, nothing happens overnight. Overnight success. Yeah, I've been singing for 25 years in some blues tavern in Louisiana. You know, you hear that kind of stuff all the time, but we only hear the end result. Right, Amy? Right. Well, I love your, I love your examples, Michelle, because the daily positivity, the first one is it starts with a spark. That's exactly what you're talking about. It's just that little, you just have to find one thing. 
one thing to po focus on. Like I, I gave this example sometimes about, I was working with this, this lady and she was really, she was just in a really dark down place. And she just insisted she had nothing to be grateful for. So I was like, go into your closet, walk into your closet. Is there anything in there you like? <laughs> and she said, well, I do kind of like my red, my red cowboy boots. And I said, okay, that's your spark. <laughs> Those red cowboy boots, you just start with something, you know, wow. and I, and what the, it, the daily positivity is all about is habits. Because when we get into uh, bad habits, a uh, negative mindset, it's, it's because it's reinforced every day, every minute, every day, you're just focusing, you're complaining on, on what's not working. So all you have to do is replace that with a little ha positive habit. And over time that builds, right? And so it's just, it's switching out a habit because like you said, it's hard to make those big life changes and just either stop doing something or go in a totally different direction. It's really hard because you still got the habits. You still got that tape playing in the background. So when you just can start making those little positive changes, then that helps you over time to make the big changes if you want to. It's, it's so easy. It sounds unbelievable is what it is. And that's why I always tell people, it's not as hard as you think it is. You're making right. it hard. You know, embrace your inner toddler. And I'm like, what do you mean? I do. Your toddler doesn't worry about the who, what, when, where, and whys. The toddler just does. And tiny steps are okay, you know? And you don't have to stop listening to the adult in you that's been crushed down with all the things that <laughs> happened right when Correct. you did the big jumps, you know? Listen to the little kid in you and says, you know what? I'm going to move. I'm going to look this way. That's all <laughs> the kid will do, right? The kid will just do, hmm, and dream about that other direction and slowly yeah. start walking towards it. Right. An adult does, no, I remember when I was five, that didn't work. So I'm not even going to try this time. It's like, whoa, whoa. You know, the kid forgot about yesterday. So they're just going to go anyways. And there's a, there's a balance of trusting yourself, trusting that kid in you that still believes in magic and the adult in you who's learned what burns and what doesn't burn. And then you've got to learn that whole, and that's my whole, my book, you know, it's not luck overcoming you is about is learning to unlearn things you learned as a child that were wrong. Right. I mean, there's so many things in our lives where we, we, something happened to us. We do, yep, that's it. That's concrete. That's the only way they don't know. It doesn't work that way. Every situation, every person, every, ah, don't get me on that soapbox. <laughs> but that's why I'm like, embrace the inner toddler. Find that child in you that believes in magic. And I'm telling you, one pop of positivity a day makes big magic. And you have, if you, if you are only listening on Anchor right now or Spotify or iTunes or whatever you're on listening, I beg you, go to my YouTube page. It's, you know, youtube.com forward slash Michelle Moross and then look for Mental Shift. It's the podcast. And you can see the two ladies on the screen right now. We are the most authentic. We are always pretty smiley and we're just very <laughs> comfortable in our world and who we are because we live on this gratitude a day. Matter of fact, we kind of fill them with our days because everything we do is like, ah, I'm so glad I have the opportunity to even be angry with you right now. You know, <laughs> right. things you can find are so amazing, right, Amy? Yeah, and something I, I just, keeps, just keeps popping in, so I'm gonna say it, Michelle. Um, I think during this time especially, when we're going through this crazy, you know, lockdown time and things are just different and we're kind of grieving uh, the way things used to be. We may be grieving um, illness. We may be grieving uh, losing somebody in our lives. <clears throat> Even during those times, when you have a gratitude habit, when you have a gratitude practice, I, it builds a foundation uh, that you can stand on. You know, it's, you know, might not necessarily be happy every day, but you have that solid foundation that's always there supporting you. It's uplifting you. It's always there. So even when you're going through hard times, you can be grateful for the lessons that you've learned or the people that you've known or the experiences that you've been able to experience. So it can even serve you, and it especially serves you in hard times. I mean, I started 
when I was going through a hard time. So then in the good times, it's, the, it's there all the time and it's easier, you know, it, it flows more easily. Uh, in the hard times, maybe you have to look a little harder for it, but it's there. Well, and what you just described in my book, it's how you build resilience. Hmm. The foundation of resilience is being grateful what you've got or what, you know what I mean? To find the little things in the dark times or whatever that time is. Resilience is what helps you bounce back, but you cannot bounce back until you have something that you can believe in, something that you can grasp and say, at least I've got this. Right. I mean, it's resilience. And so, so many people have asked me, Michelle, will you train on resilience? And I said, I can, I don't believe I can train resilience. I believe I can give examples of resilience and I can pull out of you things that will be a resilience uh, factor, basically something you could be grateful for even in your darkest times kind of thing. I mm. can help that. But the building of the resilience is a practice. Right. Daily practice. And once you are daily practicing gratitude and finding gratitude no matter what situation you're in, that is the foundation of resilience. And you cannot teach it, but you can train yourself. I love that. Yeah, it's those, it's those habits. It works. I know for me, I need habits. I need those practices and those, that sort of daily constancy, that consistency. It just helps me, and, um, and it's always there. I can always count on it. Now, I always say, you know, the differences between a rut and a grave are the dimensions. <laughs> because Ellen Glasgow is a quote by Ellen Glasgow, and I, I quoted her in my first book, Eat, Drink, and Be Merry. But I, I always go back to it because I always say, you know, the rut and the grave, you know, you don't want to keep doing the exact same thing. But in that exact same thing, you do need habits. Your brain needs habits. There are things that I always do. I wake up. I always do a meditation. I always do a bit of gratitude for whatever my day is. I also do like a, a, a quick vision board of what's going to happen during that day and how it's going to work. I, I kind of lay there for a bit. And then I get up and then I do my little push-ups and then I go do whatever I'm going to do for the day. But it's a habit that I must do. Yeah. Now, the, those uh, rut and grave points are when you never shift from anything else in your day. So I think there are foundational um, habits that you must do uh, to set your day. And then yeah. the rest of your day can fluctuate a bit. But if you do, I mean, I, before my car accident, I, used, I was so ritualistic. You could probably put on a clock exactly where I was going to be at the time. And it was just insane because I was such a control freak that if I wasn't, let's say, sitting in front of my kid's school at 2.50, um, my day would be wrecked because I was late. They didn't get out till 3.15, you know, that kind of thing. It was, but that's how my brain was locked into this, wow. this concrete block. And it's like, I should have known better. I mean, my background's in engineering. In engineering, you never build a building solid. You build it with a variance so that even when the wind blows, it gives a little a little give. So uh -huh. there's nothing crumble, right? Briggs, bridges don't crumble because they give a little. In everyday life, you must have a practice. And I encourage you all, and so does Amy, to have a practice of gratitude. Right. One little pop a day of gratitude. And you can find, you know, a, a good start on the day of, of daily positivity on the unleashyourinnerauthor.com. And eventually, Amy will have a button that says, <laughs> positivity or you know free gift or something but right now it would be unleash your inner author.com forward slash positive positive i'm gonna put that on my little notes here positive <laughs> something easy to remember yeah but i have a brain injury so i'll forget <laughs> <laughs> I gotta write it down <laughs> yeah. but and, and it's okay it's okay to to have bad days, and I'm telling you, everyone has bad days. I mean, this smiley lady, that smiley lady, we have bad days. But even in the bad day, we can say, well, at least I know now, or oh, at least the sun is shining, or you know, at least I have today to have a bad day. I mean, whatever it is, it's just a good practice to find. I, I always encourage my clients to, uh, even in their worst, time whatever is hitting the fan at that moment and I'm a terrible person to be around when if someone's passed um, because I do that's terrible how old are they oh they had such a long beautiful life and so I always find something 
positive about it, but, but they're gone. I do. But you, you had the privilege of knowing them. I mean, I didn't get to know them and they sounded wonderful. And so I always find something and people look at me like, kind of, can you just grieve for a little bit with me? I do. I am grieving in my way. Yeah. It's, it's, I think I'm now wired that way. I can't shift it. And that's a good thing in my book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, oh, there's so many people just the. I have a girlfriend who just told me um, her, her grandmother is passing. And I said, oh, that's terrible because you can't be with her. And she says, no. And I said, what, what's one good thing you can think of about all of this? She says, she doesn't know who we are. So what do you mean she doesn't know who you are? She says, she's got, she's got Alzheimer's, advanced Alzheimer's. So she actually thinks she's 15. She's never had children. And she's in her own little world. And I went, well, that's great. What do you mean that's great? I do. She's not lonely and sad. She's not wishing, wondering why her family isn't around her. She's in her own world. What a wonderful way to go. And she went, I, you're right. <laughs> you're right. She's not going to be miserable because she doesn't know. Yeah. She'll go to bed one day and not wake up and she'll be a little girl playing in a park. I think it's so beautiful. I, I'm, I'm a strange human, but I'm like, oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> it's just, thank you. She says, I've been agonizing because we can't be there holding her hand, but even if we were there, she would think we're a room of strangers. I said, right. let her be in her happy place and she'll be, she'll go and she'll be running in the park with her dog and go to sleep. It's yeah. a beautiful way to go. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping that's the way I go, just in my own la-la land and happy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Well, what a gift you gave her to help her see it from a different perspective. And that's exactly what we're talking about, right, is mindset. Yes, and how to grow your own version yeah. of, of being able to see something positive in the darkest times. Right. Because even in this time period that we're all in and everyone says, these are trying times. These are very difficult trying times. And I do know it's a change. It's just an inflection. What do you mean? It's inflection. I do. These aren't difficult times. They're trying times. Now's the time to do the things you've always wanted to do now. I mean, but I lost my job. Well, you kind of hated going to your job. So now's the time to find what you really want to do and search it out. Because I'm telling you, this world's about to be a virtual world. A lot of businesses that made you come in nine to five have realized that they can save a heck of a lot of money if you work from home. So right. uh, keep looking, find what you like, because the world will shift. It's, it's, it's pivoting. And what you wanted may not have been an option before, but I'm telling you, this world didn't pivot for a reason. I mean, for no reason. It pivoted for a reason. Go find your happy place. Go find your place. Go write your book. Yes. I promise you. <laughs> every time you're with your friends and they do, yes, you told me that story before. Or you start a story and they do, ah, not that one again. And they laugh. That's where you start. And if you need guidance, we know a coach that can guide you through that. Her name is Amy Collette, and you're looking at her or listening to her today because that is what she does. Find those stories that your friends are talking about or your grandchildren or your children or you know, your husband or wife or your, your spousal unit, your significant other rolls their eyes and you, I know the end of this one. That's your story. Start with that, right? It's obviously the one you like to right. say. Well, so many people have people telling them, you've got to write a book because you have these fantastic stories. But for me, it's also more than stories. It's how, who are you going to, who are you going to be talking to in your book? And how is that story? How are those stories going to help that person? Yeah. What's the lesson learned and why is it yeah, so what, is Yeah. It? What's the transformation? Well, and I keep telling my husband, he needs to write a book. And he says, there was nothing significant in my life. And I said, to write about because you know in my my books I've, I've gone through some horrific things and i said my first book's about your mom <laughs> okay how could i write a book about your mom i've only known her from when i was 15 you know you've known her all your life how could 
me writing a book about your mom and you have no stories? <laughs> and he has well, nothing tragic has happened to me. I mean, and you wrote about my mom. And I went, okay, here's the other thing for those of you who are thinking about writing a book, but oh, nothing tragic has happened to you. Okay, it has nothing to do about tragedy, okay? It's about right. lessons learned. For someone like me who, I was a military brat, family did not stay together very well, parents were not, weren't meant to be. And I did not realize that life could be better. I thought being married meant fighting, screaming, miserable. I never wanted to get married. If you have a story where you didn't have a lot of trauma, but you had a great life, why do you think the Brady Bunch did so well? People have rough lives and are looking for happiness, looking for there is a way that I could live and I don't have to be miserable. People are looking for that. So if you have a life that you enjoyed, write about it. Because I tell you, people like me, that's what I read. <laughs> I don't read things where bad things happen because I've had, to have, I've had enough. I want to okay. see good things happen. And what did you learn from that good thing? from the gratitude of the life you have or have had. It's time for some gratitude. It's time to write your stories. I don't care what you've gone through or what you haven't gone through in my husband's case, write it because the world needs to hear it. I, I believe every one of us uh, went through something in our lives that is meant to be shared. Every one of our lives should be written down. I don't think there's ever enough books in the world. I'm a bit of a bookaholic, but <laughs> There's never enough books and stories in the world. Right. We can all learn from every story. Good, bad, ugly, white, green, orange, purple. Right? Right. Well, I always say that <clears throat> when we write, um, other people see themselves in our stories. You know, some people feel um, a, little, a little scared about writing about their own. And like, I don't want to put all the focus on me. It's not all about me. But no, what you're doing is helping other people. You're, it's a reflection. It's a mirror, you know. So you're helping other people see themselves in your story. Exactly. And maybe opening up possibilities that they had never seen before. And that's a beautiful gift. Well, for people to even see that possibility of, wait a minute, I thought that was, I thought my life was boring. It's beautiful. Yeah. It, we need more of that. So if you have any kind of story, even if you're the, I don't know, like I said, people giggle when you start a story or you start saying something to you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Connect with Amy. I mean, really, there's a story in there. And even if you never actually full out publish it, I would say don't do that. But even if you don't, <laughs> and you think, you know, I'm just going to write this right mm -hmm. now I, for people who won't know me in the past. I mean, see, my first book I wrote because I, I thought I was never going to speak or walk again. The second book I wrote because um, I wanted my children to have a guidance through their life because I was told with my breast cancer I had three months to live. So I, I needed a, a push to make me write. But now I realize that my voice is to get other people out there to move and tell their stories. I help people tell their story verbally. Right. But I'm connecting with people like you, Amy, to help them put it on paper. So we're a good pair. I like to get the story out so they can talk about their own book when they write it. And then Amy can get you to make sure you write it. And mm -hmm. even if you just, you know, give it to your entire family, I'm telling you, your family's going to see it and do, why isn't this out? That's what happened with Eat, Drink, and Be Merry. Why isn't this book out? Right. Okay, well, it's out now. You know, that kind of thing. You never know unless you let that door crack. One pop of gratitude, one pop of positivity. Get it, okay? Because right. we are out of time. So go to www.unleashyourinnerauthor.com forward slash positive. Get your daily positive positivity uh, quote a day. Sign up for that. And um, if you've got any idea, glim glimmer, thought of a book, reach out to Amy Collette. If you know you want to write a book, you know reach out to Amy God. Um, I'm going to have a few of her authors come through um, the Mental Shift podcast because I've met a few of them on a Zoom call and it's like, holy smokes, people, why aren't you with me? Why aren't you on here talking about your books? Um, yeah. I've already had two and then, um, oh no, three. She hasn't published yet. Um, and now I've got you and then I've got someone else coming on. So I 
there'll be several authors in a row, just kind of FYI people. And yeah. if you want to know more about their experiences and stuff, when you see anyone with a book, more than likely it's Amy. Okay. And uh, <laughs> you can <laughs> listen to their story because I'm sure they're all going to do, they're all saying, well, Amy helped. Well, Amy did this and I'm so thankful for Amy. So you'll hear them say, and you'll do, you know what? Amy's helped a gamut of people. I need on, I need on her team. And so uh, please go to www.unleashyourinnerauthor.com. Reach out to Amy Collette. And uh, you could also find her on Facebook on Unleash Your Inner Author too. So if you're not an email or a web person, you can go to Facebook and find Unleash Your Inner Author. Um, any last you know, words of wisdom or words of gratitude you'd like to share, Amy? Well, one of my favorite things to say that I've said forever, but now it seems more, more relevant than ever, is that your story is not just important, it's urgent. Ooh. Your story isn't just important, it's urgent. People are out there waiting for inspiration, for motivation, and for that pop of positivity or whatever else that you have to teach. So quit waiting around and thinking, oh, someday I'll write a book. You know, when the time is right, you can't help but have it come out of you. So everybody needs a little help with that. So I'm happy to be your guide. She's your guide. And that is the perfect word, way to end because the reason I started moving was because I was told someone is waiting for your voice. Yeah. Go speak it. Yes. So. Thank you so much Amy, for joining me and everyone out there in you know, social media, radio world, or whatever podcast world. Thank you for joining us. And remember, reach out to Amy. If, you, if you've got any idea of a, a book in your head, she'll help you craft it. Okay. She'll help you with this. Uh, be the best version of you. Go out there. As Amy said, your story isn't just important. It's urgent. The world is waiting for you. Have a great day, everyone. And be the best version of you.